that was a great introduction. Thank you. I don't think I can live up to it, but it was a great introduction. So I, I, it's such a pleasure to be here this evening, I can't tell you. I've been coming for a little while, and I've heard some wonderful messages from some great speakers, so it really is a privilege to be here tonight. Now, I think before I start with, we have more than one story. I, I need to put that into perspective. We all have several stories. But before I start with the story that I'm going to talk about tonight, I would just like to address the reason for this hat. Now, I think we can all guess why I'm wearing this hat. Can we? Can we? That'll do. But really, the truth is, I did just audition for the part of an alien in an upcoming Star Wars movie. <laughs> The, bum, the bummer is, I didn't get the part. <laughs> so the story I'm going to talk about tonight was in 2006. I walked across an ancient pilgrimage route in northern Spain called the Camino de Santiago. Do it. Just do it. So that's, my, that's the start. Now the motivation for this was twofold. One was that I really needed some time to contemplate where my life had been, where it was at that time, and where it was going. <laughs> Actually, on reflection, I think I was just giving myself a hall pass from a hemorrhaging relationship. But that is another story. <laughs> the second reason was that there was a really great um, charity called the Poppy Project out of London, England. And what they did was, they, and they still do, is they outreach to women and children who were being trafficked in the sex trade. Do you know today there are more slaves in the world than ever before? There is an estimated 27 million. 27 million. And 60% of those are women and children being trafficked in the sex trade. Unbelievable to me, unbelievable. One is one person too many. So that was my motivation. Now, growing up, I was first a brownie and then a girl guide. Now, do we know the motto of the girl guides? No? Oh my gosh, be prepared, right? So I was bound and determined that I was gonna be prepared for this walk. So what were the, some of the things that I did? Well, I researched the, the route like crazy. I even made laminated progress charts because I'm a great project manager. What else did I do? I bought three volumes of reference books on the flora, the fauna, and the history of the Camino because I wanted to use them as I walked. I bought some really important stuff as well. I bought a bivy bag. Do we know what a bivy bag is? It's a lightweight tent. Now, the reason I bought that was just in case there was a freak snowstorm. <laughs> Understand that I did this walk in August and September. <laughs> so the chances of a freak storm, zero to none. What else did I do? Oh, yeah. I bought one of these high-frequency whistles because I heard there were packs of marauding dogs, wild dogs, that combed the Camino. I gotta tell ya, I didn't see one. Not one. What else did I do? Oh, I bought this lamp for my head, right? Yeah, I looked really cool. Just in case I would be walking in the dark. Yeah, it didn't happen. And what else did I do? At the time, I worked out. At the time, I was living in Sheffield in the UK. Now, Sheffield, like Rome, is built on seven hills. So I took my backpack and I loaded it with rocks, right? And I walked up and down and around those hills for a month before I left. I was going to be prepared. Let me tell you something. Nothing but nothing could, could prepare me for the arduous nature of that walk. In my wildest dreams, I could never describe it as a walk in the park. But there was some light at the end of the tunnel. Actually, it was at the beginning of the tunnel. The first day, I'd only walked 20 kilometers, and I was sitting in this chair, like exhausted. 
And this fellow pilgrim, Amber was her name, she was a Canadian, and she said to me, Ruth, I know you're tired now, but there is some good news. And I thought, okay. And she said, by the end of this walk, your calves will be rock hard, your stomach will be flat, and your bum will lift. <laughs> I thought, 760 kilometers, bum lift, seven, not a bad price to pay. <laughs> Every day, though, brought its own unique challenges. Pelting rain, sweltering heat, drops of a sheer 500 meters or more, 18 inches from where I was walking, 30 pounds of kid on my back, which left in my, you know, it was really, and continuous hills, continuous hills. I contemplated quitting as I sat on a stone wall outside an ancient church in Longrano. I wondered what the hell I was doing as I slumped beside sweltering asphalt on the road to Navarrete. I groaned up and down the hills. But all I could do was put one foot in front of the other. But then there was the piece de resistance. In the potholed sidewalks of Cacabellus, I did a lesson eloquent but most dramatic face dive into the pavement. Now, I guess when you've got 30 pounds of kid on your back and you trip, what are you gonna do but go right into the sidewalk? There I was, face, mouth bleeding, my rib cage hurt like hell, and I was surrounded by some of the more well-endowed matriarchs of the town who were yelling instructions at three adolescents on mopeds. Before I knew it, I was whisked away to a local clinic and then by ambulance onto a hospital in Pomfreda. Now to cut a long story short, what I finally came to realize was I had completely obliterated two of my front teeth, a third one was hanging by a thread, and I'd severely bruised my rib cage. I gotta tell you something. Seven hours later when I left the hospital, I looked like the wicked witch of the north, the south, the east, and the west. It was not a pretty sight. So that was a Friday. And what I did was I left the hospital and I took a taxi to the local um, hotel because I had some decisions to make. Did I stay and walk the way? By the way, I forgot to tell you, the English translation for Camino de Santiago is the way of St. James. So did I just suck it up and walk the rest of the way? Or did I hightail it back to the UK to get fixed? Now, when my friends found out, they were going, Ruth, you gotta come back. You can't stay in Spain. You don't speak the language. For God's sake, you gotta come back. But I'm not a quitter. And I realized that I wasn't walking just for myself. I was walking for those women and children who didn't have the freedom to walk. So it was a huge decision for me to make. But two days later, I thought, I can't do, I was whistling through this one tooth that was hanging. I thought, I gotta go back. So with a very heavy heart, I boarded the train to Santiago and onto the airport, where I slept in the airport on the Sunday night because I couldn't get a flight back to the UK until the Monday. When I got back, my friends were saying, oh, never mind, it wasn't meant to be. Maybe you can finish it another time. But I had a plan. If only I could pull it off. I didn't tell anybody. And this is where the blessings start to kick in. My dentist uh, saw me on Tuesday afternoon, and he tried not to react to the mess of my mouth, but it was pretty hard, because I told you, the witch, yeah, it was happening. And what he did was he had scheduled enough time for my appointment to take, he had to uh, extract the third tooth, because it just wasn't gonna be saved. He said, never mind, Ruth, I don't have time for anything else, but you come back at seven o'clock tonight, this was the Tuesday, you come back at seven o'clock tonight and I'll come back and I'll make an impression for a temporary denture, right? 
So he did. He not only did that, he actually personally took it to the denturist on the Tuesday night. This denturist worked on making me a temporary denture on Tuesday night. Before I'd left the dentist's office on Tuesday night, he had said to me, it's my day off tomorrow, but I'm going to come back in so I can fit your denture for you. The generosity of spirit that I experienced through that time was unbelievable. You know what? So that was Wednesday, right? Guess where I was on Thursday? Guess where I was? I was on a plane heading back to Spain. I finished the walk. But that's not the only blessing. When my sponsors um, knew what I'd done, they said, Ruth, my gosh, since you had doubled your efforts, we are going to double our donations. It was the most amazing experience, one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I raised over $5,000 for the project. Thank you. So this is one of the lessons that I learned along the Camino. Challenges come and go every day that we walk through our path through life. They can be small or they can be big, right? It's not the challenges that define and confine who we are, but how we respond to them. Challenges do not deter us from our goals. What deters us from our goals is giving up. Thank you.